Hi friends, this is Dave of javacodejunkie.com and welcome to another JavaFX tutorial. In this episode, we're going to learn how to use the JavaFX password field. I'm going to cover the following topics. How to create a password field. How to get the value of a password field. How to set the value of a password field. And finally, we're going to look at setting an event handler for a key event for the password field. Let's create a new JavaFX project. We'll right click in the Package Explorer. New Other JavaFX Project. Click Next. Project name is Password Field Demo. Click Finish. Right click on the Password Field Project. Scroll down to Build Path and then Configure Build Path and we're going to again add the JavaFX libraries to our class path. Add Library, User Library, click Next. Choose JavaFX, click Finish, and click Apply and Close. Let's open up the main.java file. The Password field is a subclass of the text field class and it doesn't add any extra behavior other than the ability to mask characters that are entered into the password field text box. So let's create some private instance variables in our application class. Private border pane root this will be the root of our scene graph. A stage object and a scene object. To demonstrate the password field, I'm going to set up several user interface elements in our scene graph. And those are going to be a label for our password field, the password field itself, and a button as well as a label for messages that we're going to display as we configure and learn how to use the password field. We'll start with a label for the password field. The password field itself. button, and a message label. Organize our imports. Now let's start creating our user interface elements. Label password equals new label. Password, the password field, we'll set the preferred column count, we'll set that to 10, we'll create our button. And I'm going to set the preferred size for the button. Width of 75 and a height of 25. And finally, our message label. And I'll put some text in that label just so that we can see it when we add it to our user interface. When I'm adding groups of user interface elements to a pane in our scene graph, I often like to wrap them in either a horizontal box or a vertical box. I'm going to wrap the first three of these controls, the password label, the password field, and the button in a horizontal box and add that to the top area of our border pane. And then I'm going to add the message label to the bottom area of our border pane. 
because I have to create two horizontal boxes to do that and I don't like to duplicate code, I'm going to create a small helper method that will create the H box and add the controls to it. So let's scroll down in our class. I'll make this method public. It will return a horizontal box. I'll call the method create horizontal box. And as a parameter to this method, I'm going to accept a variable number of node objects. And those are the children of the horizontal box. So let's start by creating an H box. And I'm going to directly add all of the children. I'm going to set some padding on the H box. Set some component spacing. And finally, return the horizontal box. And now we can add our components to the border pane. Root dot set top. Create H box. Um, and now we simply specify the three controls that we're going to add to the top. That would be label, password, password, and the OK button. We'll do the same for the bottom where we'll add our status message. Let's run and see how that looks. And there we have the password label, the password field, the button, and we have our status label at the bottom. We haven't set a title for our stage. So let's take care of that. Primary stage dot set title, password, field, demo. Run again. We have a stage title and we have all of our components displayed on the screen. And when we enter a password into the password field, you can see that the characters that we type for the password are masked by using the bullet character. Let's add an event handler to our button so that when we enter a value into the password field, we can then get that value when someone clicks on the button and will display the actual value in our status message at the bottom of our stage. Button OK. Dot, and I'll use again the set on action method. An action event is generated when we click on the button. We'll import the event handler. We'll import the action event, and then we'll add the unimplemented method, which is the handle method for our event handler. And then in the event handler, we will say label message dot set text password, which is the variable for our password field dot get text. Let's run and test that. Let's enter a password. And then click on the OK button. And the password that I entered was the word password. We'll change the message just a little to add some context. Run it again. Enter a password. Click OK. And you have entered the password 1234. So that's how you get the value from the password field. It's the same as the text field because the password field is a subclass of text field. We just use the get text method to retrieve the value. To set the value of a password field, you simply use 
the set text method. So let's in our event handler for our OK button. After we've displayed the message in our status bar showing the password that was entered, let's just blank the password field. We would say password dot set text and run. So we will enter a password, click the OK button. The password will be displayed in our status message at the bottom of the screen, and then the password field should be blanked. And there it is. One little annoyance about the text field and the password field is that when you're in either of them and you're, you're finished with your entry, hitting Enter won't move you to the next field. Hitting Tab, however, will but it doesn't do any verification. So I'm going to just show you one method to do verification on a text field or a password field. It works the same on either, such that if you enter a value and then hit enter or tab to move to the next field, we can put some rules around what is a valid entry for that text field or password field before we will allow the user to move to the next field. And to do that, I'm going to add a key event handler to the password field. Password dot on key pressed property dot set. And the set method expects an event handler for the key event. So we'll create a new anonymous inner class. For the key event. We'll add the unimplemented method. And here's where we'll enter our validation code when the user presses the tab or the enter key. If event dot get code dot equals key code dot enter or event dot get code dot equals key code dot tab. And say, for example, we wanted to make sure that the password was at least four characters in length. If password dot get text dot length is less than four, we'll print a message to our status bar. password must be at least four characters in length. And we'll request focus again back on the password field. Else So now we know at this point that the password is four characters or greater. We'll get the password and again print the password that was entered to our status label. And then we'll move the focus to the OK button. Set text. password.getText and request focus on the button. And for this test, we'll just comment out our event handler on the button. Let's run. Now let's enter a password that's less than four characters and try to tab out. You'll see the message down at the bottom, password must, that's a misspelling, must be at least four characters in length, and the focus is set back on the password field. If we now type at least four characters 
and hit the tab key, you have entered one, two, three, four, and the focus is now on the button. Let's go back and enter at least four characters and now hit the enter key to test that. And same thing, we get the same behavior on enter or tap. Just going to go back and fix that message. Must be. And that's one way to do some validation on the value that's entered into a text field or a password field. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so that you don't miss any content when I release new videos. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. I really appreciate it. I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.